Right, that's kind of like my warm up <clears throat> before I actually do my first vlog ever, which I'm not used to at all, period. But yeah, let's get to it. My name is Nye and I am from Albany, New York and I'm a basketball player and an artist. But right now it's artist era currently because COVID and everything that's kind of gone semi downhill, but not really because we alive and we're gonna be fine. I tell everybody this, we're gonna be fine. Let's talk about how I got into sport. So when I was little, literally my grandma and mom were talking about kind of what I wanted to get into. I was doing like some dance at first, fun fact. And I was in ballet and jazz. I enjoy jazz more than ballet, go figure. I found ballet to be too like gentle and I was just like, ah, oh, this is too slow. So jazz is a bit like, yeah, 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 da, 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 a bit more fun. So, you know, that was kind of ending. And literally my grandma walked up to my mom and was like, Leah's getting fat. Cool, thanks Grams. <laughs> so <laughs> honestly, that's kind of how I got into sports was I was getting chubby and she kind of made note to my mom and my mom kind of agreed. She didn't really want to be mean, but she kind of was like, yeah, she's good. She is. That's reality. So, um, yeah. So basically at my grandmother's church, she saw on the bulletin board that they were having basketball tryouts. So she put me in that. Nah, it ain't it. <laughs> it wasn't it. <laughs> I was so bad. Like, it was so bad. And I was picked on a lot. I was bullied. Just very like micro kid things that you always will remember because it's just part of your past. That's always how it goes. So there was a really critical point. I would definitely say most critical point in my life where I came home crying from practice because I was just really tired of not being good and I was getting picked on and then I was dealing with stresses from like my father and all that in my life. Pretty much she gave me two choices. It was either quit and need to figure out something else or I'm gonna put you in some camps. I decided to do camps. And it took me a while to think about it. I think I had thought about it for like a day-ish. And that's long for a kid to think about like something they want to decide. Usually it's like, yeah, I don't feel like it. Yeah, sure. I started doing camps during the off season and year by year I was getting better and better and people start recognizing that constantly and that there was different version of me that was growing and I was still very reserved and very shy and not always speaking up I was very much that person I still look back and I'm like wow there were so many times that I really felt like yeah I could have spoken up more but I just, it just wasn't me like that's who I wasn't at the time which I accept because I feel like we're always growing and changing as people at that time that was not me so but I still achieved the successes in ball and I was still growing and that's eventually how I got into my art career. Made several teams, had several championships, and by probably like end of senior year of high school, I was trying to decide what I wanted to pursue in as a career. And overall, I found everything quite boring long-term. Like for me, math, no. Math ain't for me. <laughs> it's fun with the right people, or like I like geometry or um, basic stuff, but nothing crazy where now letters and numbers and even decimals are now involved. I'm like, yeah, I ain't got time for this. Science, I loved, but I wasn't good at it. So, <laughs> so there was that, that was the issue. I loved it though. There was history, I love history. I think the history is so dope and so cool. But yeah, I just wasn't as good at it as I was. I could. Like, I was a visual person, holy, but in terms of remembering numbers and stuff, canceled. Forget it. That's when I was like, the arts, I felt was like the greatest balance of all those three because it was something I wasn't great at at first, but I was improving and I was showing talent. So I was like, huh, 
art might be it because I felt art was like kind of becoming part of my life. You know, being still a hooper and being an artist and went on that journey. So we're in undergrad and you know, I'm taking graphic design and media arts at school. And one of the biggest issues I had to face was that it was very uncommon for athletes to be artists because of the schedules and that it was very, it was very conflicting. And our teachers were not a fan of when athletes couldn't make class. I learned that the hard way. There was one time where my teacher wrote a letter to my coach and my coach called me in to meet here in the office one morning and just started like screaming at me and flung like this email printout on the table. She said, read that. I'm reading it. It felt like the most insulting email I've ever read in my life to anyone. Like it was so much like attackage, even, I don't even know if that's a word, but there was so much like, we don't like that she's not coming to class. She should be an artist full time and not be in basketball. Like it was basically everything that could tear apart ball was in this letter. Why out of all times is my teacher deciding now, after I explained I'm gonna be playing and here's my schedule, let me know what I need to make or if we can make additional time so that I can go to that and not, you know, I don't know, just miss class. Like maybe sit in a different class from getting some kind of similar experience. But no, we're gonna write letters <laughs> that are like disrespecting what I grew up on. I had to go meet my teacher and consolidate this and figure it out because I just didn't feel that was fair. And I felt that was, I even told him it was rude that you sent this letter to my coach instead of talking to me about it. Cause now she's mad at me and you have a problem with me and her. So there was a lot of moments I felt like I had to really be mature and handle these problems. There was incidents like that. I had to deal with situations in class when during critiquing where people would speak their mind on stuff and there was a fine line between how you say things. My senior project, I did a concept for this company in Sub-Saharan Africa. And it's a lot with branding and, you know, getting photography and showcasing, you know, taking care of life and people and African people, more like community built. I'm gonna try to experiment and get my own photography. Hence, I'm gonna have to take photogra photographs of people of, that ancestry, because it wouldn't make sense to just photograph, you know, for instance, a bunch of people that don't, wouldn't demographically live there. It wouldn't make sense for the brand. I took a picture, a bunch of picture of friends that were from different African backgrounds, even mixed race, all that. Just get photos in different poses and lighting, just experimenting to see if well, there's something in these that could work. And mind you, we had um, both the fine arts and the graphics together for critique because it was our senior class that was showcasing the stuff that we've been doing. And so they were all kind of giving their input. So there's everybody in this joint, right? <laughs> everybody here. And this one girl, I will always remember this. She was just, she just said after like I showed my photos that all I see is a bunch of black people and it just blew minds. Being a hooper, being an artist has taught me to be so resilient and so many things like to not be the aggressor but let kind of people deal with their own karma that was something i had to like experience because it was like put me on spot type embarrassment not only for me in a way but for also that individual that said that my people that i photographed were there to go see it too so they're hearing this my teacher i remember his face was flushed red so he was like embarrassed because that kind of comment is so disrespectful. So everything's about context when you come into anything. So like, you can't just say that terminology. I would say that about anything. Like, oh, I just see a bunch of Indian people. Oh, I just see a bunch of this. Like, it's just like, they're, you're not even giving me like any feedback. You're just saying, ah, it's a bunch of whatever. But how is it whatever when it's for building wells so that people can have clean water in these communities that don't have clean water? Like, it don't make sense. Yeah craziness so these are some like experiences i've dealt with when having to be an artist and having to be a basketball player in the end i this project i got to present in front of the dean it was selected as one of them that was strong enough to present in front of the dean of the school so i'm like when you're taking two journeys that you're so passionate about you're going to deal with these combined conflicts of interest 
as I continued my art journey, I felt like a lot of my stuff kept getting kind of cut down constantly. We don't like this. Uh, we don't like that. Like there was an incident where I created a Vogue cover, like a concept of it. And I made it kind of distorted like because this artist I was inspired by, he used to do covers. Actually, no, sorry, not Vogue, Bizarre. So he used to do Bizarre covers and would make women very abstract. So like kind of focusing on this sort of unique beauty in that sense. I did that and yeah, it was just, was getting shut down because they didn't like the distortions. My fine arts teacher loved it, which I always rate him because he saw the perspective I was going for. And sometimes in graphics, graphics can always be about being precision and clean. And there's always the stereotypes of that. It got declined to be in the show. My other piece got in, but I was sad that I didn't because I actually really liked that piece a lot. By end of the year, we had portfolio review and um, we were showcasing to all these directors, teachers from different areas, um, employers. So it was good for us. We get to actually get exposure. And one of these art directors was looking through my folio and she saw my bizarre cover and I even printed it out like, kind of full size to see how it would realistically look as a cover. She was like, have you sent this to Bazaar? What? She said, send this to Bazaar. This got shut down by the school. You want me to send this to Bazaar? And she's like, yeah, this is phenomenal. She's like, it's beautiful how you like meshed in distorted areas. Oh man, people got me. They got me so messed up. I'm laughing because I'm just remembering all this stuff and the way I'm like, speaking to you guys about it. It's just crazy how opinions are so varied. Like people can tell me, oh, nah, you're not a good ball player. And like, oh. and like there was one point in time my mom was stressed because she didn't want me to go overseas. And she was like, oh, but you can't do it because just because so-and-so did it. And I'm like, but no, I'm going to do it because I want to do it and I'm going to make it happen. And I did make it happen. Was it to go play pro? No, but I still went to go play ball and do what I love to do, which is art. So boom. I've kind of learned like in art, art is a very opinionated journey. You're gonna deal with so many conversations and people coming at your stuff. There's always gonna be those that are kind of a bit more significant in value. To me, it was like, oh, my teacher shut this down. But yeah, an art director loved it. So that's where my mind's blown. I'm like, teacher, art director, teacher, art director. In the professional field, telling me they like this. Not to knock any teachers or anything, but it's just like, as you grow and learn, you're like, well, when you look at them, they are like at different va values to you when you're receiving this critique. When you think about it, it's like, at the end, it goes back to everyone has an opinion. That's why I just kept going with being a creative. Cause I'm like, at the end of the day, people are always gonna have their thoughts on how you perceive things and how you make things. As long as you stay true to who you are as an artist, you'll be fine. Cause not everyone's gonna like your stuff. Not everyone's gonna like who you are, but that's fine. You know your ish can be backed and you know that what you're doing is more powerful than anything else that you would be doing. As I was overseas, I got to make my first book, which is still getting um, edited and reviewed because I want to push it even more and you know I wrote my first book when I was abroad called Song of Jade and that's still kind of in semi works and it's been a couple years now but I want to pursue per, create the best thing and then get it into publishing that's like my goal and the year after well not year after I'll say two years later you know I make my first animated short film called Vanity which has received recognition in the UK which was also um, not nominated, but pre-selected for British Animation Awards. So when you look back at where you started and think, dang, like every teacher has knocked me of any work I was doing and saying basically it was trash. And now we're here where I'm receiving recognition beyond recognition that I expected for work that I'm creating now to also now getting finally hired by industry. Like it blows your mind how far things can take you and how passionate you have to be to keep perceiving these things, to keep pursuing stuff that you wanna do in your life. Even with basketball, like I started here where bullying, not good, da da da, did camps, got recognized, achieved championships, still dealt with my like ish, but was still on a path to happiness. Be happy with what you're doing. 
be happy, how you're growing and learning and just keep kind of going with the vibe. Just always remember to be happy that you're doing it and to always remember that there's going to be conflicts out of your control, but you can always keep pushing yourself and learning to grow from that. I figured, you know, it's a good vlog intro to my page. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm me talking about basketball and being an artist. It's quite difficult, but it's surely worth the lifetime that I've ever experienced ever. That's it for this vlog, guys. Please, please like, subscribe, share. I hope I've inspired some of you to some degree during this weird COVID time. We in there and we're chilling, we're vibing, keep growing, stay safe, love yourself, ball is life. Do you, man, like seriously, do you? And just keep rocking with it because eventually all these things are gonna come together in no time, so. Yeah, peace.